Good morning and welcome to Her Voice, the Women Voice and Leadership Nigeria program and project is a five-year project funded by Global Affairs Canada. The project is aimed at tackling the barriers to gender-based and supporting gender balance actually and supporting the empowerment of women and girls through provision of financial and technical resources to local women's rights organizations in Nigeria. This intervention, which started in 2019, is designed to respond to the challenges faced by these organizations in their efforts to eliminate discrimination and rights violations in policy and legislation and the provision of services as well as harmful social beliefs and practices. Today, on Her Voice, we will be highlighting five years of impact of the WVLN project by two of the women's rights organizations, Women's Rights and Health Project and NECA's network of entrepreneurial women, NNEW, who benefited from this support from Action Aid and Global Affairs Canada. Joining us in the studio today is Precious Ibere Chukum, the Centre Manager of Women's Rights and Health Project, Fumilayo Arogun, President of NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women, to share more about the incredible journey and accomplishments over the past five years. Welcome, I am Miracle Philip. To be part of the conversation, you can reach us by, by calling on 07000 917 917, or you can send your thoughts via our SMS or WhatsApp line which is 0703-175-6537. You can also listen live from any part of the world on www.wfm917.com as well as follow us across our social media platforms at WFM917. The start of the conversation would be directing this question now to Fumi Lyle. Arogun, who is the president of NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women. And this question actually will be going to her as we commence the discussion. Could you give us a brief overview of your organization and its mission in your community? Okay. Thank you so much, and Precious. Good morning, everyone listening in. Okay, I'm so delighted to be here to share the remarkable journey that um, NECA's network of entrepreneurial women has been having with um, Action Aid Nigeria on the Women Voice in Leadership Project. So I will talk, I will speak briefly about um, NECA's network of entrepreneurial women. We are actually a business membership organization and the short form of our name is NNEW, standing for NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women. It was established in 2005 under the ages of Nigeria's consultative association, NECA. And the reason why we were established is to promote and nurture entrepreneurship amongst women. It is a forum for women entrepreneurs to focus on issues which are crucial to the thriving of their businesses. Um, over the past uh, 19 years now, we have registered over 2,000 members because we are spread over the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. So we're in Lagos, we're in Federal Capital Territory, we're in Kwara, we're in Kaduna, we are in rivers were also in Obu, in Obu states. And we have developed the entrepreneurial and managerial capacities of over 3,000 women, and um, both at the local, um, the, at the grassroots. And our mission at NEW is to empower women to embrace entrepreneurship and to prosper in their businesses for the general good of the society. 
and basically what we are doing or what the what we have created for women is a forum for women to consult and dialogue amongst themselves on issues of business interests. We also provide opportunity for women to share information and to create linkages that will enhance the growth of their businesses. We also promote mentorship, modeling as a, de as a development tool for women entrepreneurs. We are also an advocacy group to influence economic agenda and policies. Also, we support women with business ideas to become, to become better entrepreneurs. So basically, that is what we do at um, NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Fumilayo, for your response. And of mm. course, that sounds really, really impactful. Now, I'll take this question to Precious Iberichuku. Can you share some specific examples of the work done in the community under the project? Good okay. morning. Thank you so much um, for having me. My name is Precious Iberichuku, and I work with Women's Rights and Health Project. Women's Rights and uh, Women's Rights and Health Project Managers of the Retail Resource Center is an innovative women and community. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Women's Rights and Health Project Managers of the Retail Resource Center is an innovative women and community focus not for profit organization. We are registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission in 2008. Our vision is to have a just society where the dignity of women, young people, and communities is respected and they enjoy sound health and maximize their potential. To achieve this, we use a right based approach to improve women's and community health and development by equipping, mobilizing, and actively engaging community members as agents of social change through information sharing, capacity building, and advocacy. Our thematic areas include promotion of gender equality, social reproductive health and rights of women and girls, promotion of gender equality laws and the en enactment of those laws, sustained advocacy and capacity building for stakeholders, involvement in policy development, including the youth. We also, we are, our thematic area also includes sexual and gender-based violence case management, providing psychosocial support, referral, and legal aid for survivors. We also promote and establish psychosocial support resource center, which is the Ireti Resource Center. We also empower women and girls. Our key values are gender equality and inclusion, respect for the rights of women, integration, integrity, accountability, and excellence. So our core competence is on community engagement and inclusion, building strategic and sustained partnership, monitoring organizations on women's rights and health. We are also into research and documentation. Our success, RAP has been instrumental in strengthening the capacity of community structures, such as grassroots training, when we talk about community structures, we are referring to the Pepe Grinders Association. We are referring to the Babas Association who have been building their capacity, training them on the laws, the Lagos State Domestic Violence Law. And also, this is to enhance SGBB reporting. Our success also is in simplification, printing and distribution of these laws because when we started over 15 years ago, we discovered that the laws are in place. People are not aware of these laws. They don't even know how to assess justice. So these laws needed to be simplified 
in a language that community members can easily understand and through that they can demand access to justice. We also train, uh, train police officers on how to effectively manage cases of LGBT. We have trained over 1,027 community advocates as mandated reporters. RAP is currently in three states. We are based in Lagos. In Lagos State, we have two offices, one at Oshodi Solo, one at Alimosho. And we, are, we have an office space in Edo State, and we also have another office space in the Boeing State. In 2020, RAP established the Ereti Resource Center, which provides psychosocial support, referral, and legal aid for survivors of SGBB. We have touched the lives of over 700 beneficiaries in 70 communities, 25 local governments, and then two states, and 11 states. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the brief right there, Precious Iberi Chuku, who is the Center Manager of Women's Rights and Health Project RAP. Now to you, Fumilayo Arogo, the President of NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women. Tell us. I mean, it's incredible to hear about the different range of initiatives the Women's Rights and Health Project RAP and NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women has undertaken. How have these interventions really impacted the community over the past five years? Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to start by saying what WVL Nigeria Project is actually all about. So the WVL Nigeria Project in, in partnership with Action Aid and powered by Global Access Canada, is actually aimed at tackling the barriers to gender equality and supporting the empowerment of women and girls through provision of technical and financial resources to local women's rights organizations and their networks. Now, for us at New, the intervention of WVF project has been in the area of building the financial capacity of market women through the education, through education on basic financial record keeping. So this project, what we are doing in a new with WVI project is to empower, increase the capacity of those women at the lower rung of the ladder those women in the marketplaces who are, you know, they have small, small business that they are doing. And their businesses are in the informal sector. So for us in new, we deal with women that are in formal sector, whose businesses have been formalized, who, that have structures. But working with WVL project, this project becomes our, is our CSR our social responsibility, our support, you know, our, our way of giving, giving back to the society. And, and, and we have been empowered by Action A through this WVL project. So what we do is to train market women in basic financial record keeping in Lagos states. And also, through this uh, financial record keeping and education we thus prepare them for funding opportunities. So, like we know, when funding comes, when businesses are not well structured or well positioned, even though these fundings are available, these businesses are unable to access them, even at the marketplaces. So, through the intervention of the WVF project with a NECA's network of entrepreneurial women, we're able to, to train the market women on how to keep basic financial records. And in the course of the, the program, the market women have been receiving enlightenment on the taxation policies of the Lagos Internal Revenue Services. So prior to the intervention of the WVA project with NEW, a lot of them, of these market women, despite the fact that they have little to run their businesses, they are still being taxed outrageously. But with the intervention of the WVF project, we were able to train them to, 
for, to, to, for them to realize the importance of their civic responsibility in paying revenue ta uh, tax taxes, but to know the actual amount to pay so that they are not overbilled. Also, in the area of advocacy against sexual and gender-based violence in the market, through the WVR project, we have been able to train or to explore that the cases of gender-based violence in the marketplaces are reduced drastically. So let them know that when anything happens, silence is not golden, that they need to speak out. And whoever that is caught faces, um, and the, and the, the, uh, faces judgments. And this is what we have been doing with them. And we know that a lot of times, when, even when people go to the marketplaces to go and buy, this, some of these people that are selling will be hustling to bring uh, these um, customers to come and buy in their shops. In the process, they touch many of these uh, customers in, uh, in uh, inappropriate places. But through this um, SGB, uh, um, the SGBV um, advocacy that we have been doing, they now realize that it is an offense for you to touch people in inappropriate uh, places. Also, to ensure that the incidence of SGBV is reduced. These are some of the areas that we have been targeting in the marketplaces. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fumilayo. I must say it has been remarkable work that, you know, the project has really done. Now, we'll take this conversation a step further to knowing exactly what Women's Rights and Health Project RAP and NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women plans moving forward. And I'll direct that question to you, Precious Iberichuku. All right. Thank you so much for the question. Before I continue with the answer, I would just like to briefly share on the, the WBL project with us in RAP. Just like I've mentioned earlier on the Ureti Resource Center, being managed by Women's Rights and Health Projects, was established in the year 2022, following the extensive previous work and recognize, recognition for the need for a center in Adimosho which is the most populated local government area with the highest reported case of sexual and gender-based violence, this center provides comprehensive support for survivors of LGBT, getting justice for survivors, involved effective case management, and a significant gap was evident, as many of these survivors lacked the financial ability to pursue their cases. And um, the WBL project, the Women's Voice and Leadership Program, provided crucial support for case management, greatly benefiting both survivors and RAP. This gap was huge that it covered. The support includes transportation for counseling. Many survivors cannot even afford transport to the center for their therapy and for their psychosocial support needs. So WBL projects came in to support us to be able to manage this process. We also have transportation for survivors to report cases in the police stations and effect arrest. Just like we all know that um, in Nigeria, getting justice is sometimes very cumbersome for survivors who most of the time are dependent on their abusers. WBL projects came in to assist us with this ability for police to go, effect arrest, and um, try these cases to cause. The PBL's project also helps us at the center to be able to rescue survivors from the abusive environment to a safe space. They also assisted us in case management. So we are able to file cases in courts. Currently, we, we've gotten two convictions, and we have over 40 cases in the Nigerian courts in Lagos State. Beyond case management, the WBL project has contributed several, has conducted several activities to empower community right. members to demand their rights and assess justice. One of the things that we also benefited was that RAP became, we are able to manage 12 community-based organizations, managing them from how they started their, the inception of their their, their organization, the things, the legal things they are supposed to get, 
registration of their organization, their financial policies, all the, all the things, all the policies they are supposed to get and how to implement their different project activity. RAP was able to manage this. We've also conducted different community legal clinics where community members are taught or aware on how to demand their rights. Okay. We have also created leadership training. We also organize a men's work against LGBT. The men being the champions, moving to tell other people, other men, not to commit rape. One of the things we also did with our survivors is to have conduct what we call safe space session and glow up session. This is a, a session where survivors are being decorated, trying to move from to see themselves a better person and how the situations they found themselves, how they can turn it around to become a good situation, oh or how they God. can be able to walk through that process. To the WBL project, we have... All right, we are unable to hear from your end, uh, but let me know. Uh, Fumilaya, may I know if you're still there? Yes, I, I am. Okay, please, uh, just as we wrap up uh, quickly, I'd like for you to let us in on your final words you know, concerning the project. In one minute, please. Okay, before I do that, I was unable to, I mean, mention a few of the things we also that we're doing. So the WVL project has allowed us to equip 400 female petty traders with necessary knowledge. Then, like I mentioned earlier, reduction in levies from 11,000 to 6,000. We have been able to enroll 50 selected female petty traders from three markets in the National Health Insurance Scheme in Lagos State. The sensitization of over 600 market leaders in Lagos State on the ills and the consequences of sexual harassment in the marketplace. So we have also been able to, through the WVL project, to increase 52 female petty traders they were trained on the use of simple technology and social media to maintain sales aimed at ensuring that petty traders are able to safely continue their trades right. no matter what happens. And so going forward, uh, our plan is just to continue with what we have been doing and to ensure that the, if, even if the people that we are you know, working with, they are able to own it, to own this project and on their own to be able to build up on it. And um, that's basically the word that we say. And to just to appreciate uh, actual Aid Nigeria and w uh, on the WVL leadership project in conjunction with, um, actually, with um, Global Affairs Canada on the huge support that they have rendered to us the women in Nigeria. Okay. Thank you so much to them. And thank you for the opportunity, Women Radio, to share this remarkable journey. All thank right. you. Thank you very much, uh, Fumi Layo Arogun, the president of NECA's Network of Entrepreneurial Women, as well as Precious Iberichuku Center, manager of Women's he um, Rights Women's Right and Health Project RAP. Uh, on the 6th day of April 2022, a federal high court sitting in Abuja ruled in favor of Nigeria women against the government for the failure to uphold the affirmative action proposing 35% inclusion of women in elective position in Nigeria. This court started since inception of the WVL project and was championed by Women in Politics Forum. 100 Women Lobby Group, Women Radio, FIDA, Niger Women Trust Fund, who are partners of the project and other women groups. This goes a long way to review demonstrable evidence of how the WVL project is blazing the trail and advancing women's participation through multiple layers of funding and tailored capacity building support. Thank you once again, my guests, for joining us today. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Her voice condemns all forms of violence and discrimination against women and girls. Her voice is an initiative of Women Radio under the Women Voice and Leadership Project, which support Action Aid Nigeria with funding from Global Affairs Canada. Thank you to the theme behind the production today, executive producer Tom Okewale Shanaya, Taiwo Adeleye, Nafisat Abdulaziz, Aisha Sani, 
Until next time, I am Miracle Philip. WFM 91.7.